Hello everyone and welcome to the Google Partners Academy on Air. It's fantastic to have you all here today. Today we'll be focused on supporting our retailers in terms of driving online sales. To kick off the day, I'll first provide an introduction to driving online sales. As we know, this has been a turbulent past year and we have so many things to discuss in terms of what 2021 means for our retailers. Firstly, to quickly introduce myself, my name is Sarah Jane Cowman and I lead the EMEA Retail Product and Sales Activation Team. Our team supports our customers as well as our agencies in terms of accelerating retail growth. As you can see, we have a lot of interesting topics to cover today. So please do stay with us throughout. Today, I'll be just first setting the scene as to why driving online sales is an important part of the overall strategy for our retail clients. We'll delve into the e-commerce trends that are impacting the market in 2021 and what those mean for our agencies moving forward. To start off, let's acknowledge the change that we've seen over the past year. Throughout the global pandemic, we've seen digital consumer behaviors accelerate. In fact, in 2020, we experienced 10 years worth of e-commerce growth in only three months. Many businesses had to quickly adapt their products and services or even create new ones in order to adjust to shifting customer needs. Alongside this digital acceleration, consumer journeys have become messier and more complex. The pandemic accelerated a trend by which consumers expect more from brands. Consumers are looking to retailers to meet their ever-changing needs and provide relevant and up-to-date information as they navigate this dynamic digital environment. I know this slide has a lot of information here, so I'll pause for you to take this in. This slide shows the extent of the retail customer journey. We have a lot of touch points with our clients in terms of research, discovery, ordering, and then finally shipping the products to our customers. We've also seen that customers are not only going online to purchase, but are leveraging digital for inspiration, discovery, and research throughout this journey. Globally, 92% of customers visit a brand's website to do something other than purchase. Satisfying immediacy is also now more important than loyalty. This means that any brand has the opportunity to meet their customers at their time of need. With more and more customers turning to digital, for inspiration, discovery, and research. This creates an increasing opportunity to capture new customers. Nine out of 10 customers are uncertain of the exact brand that they want when they begin searching online. A recent study also showed that 40% of online shoppers ended up making purchases with a new brand last year. In summary, the retail landscape has changed greatly over the course of the last year and will continue to inspire retailers to stay on top of trends as we move into 2021. As customers steer away from shopping centers, many global customers plan to continue shopping online. While online, they're looking to retailers to have up-to-date information and personalized offers as they sift through a sea of many competitors. That being said, there's room for brand discovery as consumers are re-evaluating their preferred brands and are open to exploring new retailers. Let's now take a look at what these trends mean for your relationship with your retailers. First of all, 85% of CEOs agree that the pandemic has significantly accelerated digital transformation, fueling optimism for new advantages and opportunities, giving you the unique opportunity to help your clients achieve this transformation. In an era of digital transformation, expectations of agencies are also transforming. Clients expect their agencies to act as a strategic partner to help drive profitable growth in alignment with their unique business objectives and opportunities in the market. Working towards each type of customer objective will allow you to drive profitable growth for your clients. Focusing on customer objectives will help you as an agency to retain and grow clients also leading to overall agency growth. We can ask ourselves questions such as, what are your client's business goals? And how do those media objectives align with those end goals? What opportunities are arising within this dynamic marketplace, which you can help your clients to capitalize upon? This is where we can work together 
with your laser focus on your client's marketing objectives and an understanding of how media KPIs map to those goals, we can help drive profitable growth for your clients in an era of digital transformation. A recent study showed that for clients, growth is a need to have, whilst efficiency is a nice to have. Growth is now a key priority and ranks higher than improving campaign specific performance. However, you'll always want to ensure that you're helping to drive profitable growth for your retail clients. This can be achieved by utilizing four main pillars. These include enriching campaigns with first party data, aligning account structures to business objectives, driving creative and operational excellence, and also providing strategic insights to your customers. These actions help to drive more strategic value and a deeper partnership through advanced approaches. If you want to learn more about how to drive profitable growth for your retailers, you can tune into the next session, which will discuss this in a little bit more detail. Thank you so much for joining today and I hope you enjoy the rest of the sessions. everyone and welcome to the Academy on Air. Today we're going to discuss how you can be a true strategic partner to your retailers by helping them to drive profitable growth by leveraging first-party data with smart shopping campaigns. My name is Katharine de Vlieg and I work as EMEA's retail lead. I'm not alone here, I'm here together with my colleague Justin. Hi, my name is Justin and I'm a strategic agency consultant here at Google as well as a member of our retail task force. Having worked with many agencies past and current, I'm very excited today to share with you best practices and strategies to help you and your clients grow. Thank you, Justin. So after this session, you will learn more how to improve the customer experience of your retailer's business by leveraging the Grow My Store Partner Tool. And then you will learn more about how to leverage our app retail solutions. This will be followed up by a fireside chat with two amazing agencies, Yellow Grape from the Netherlands and Rosenio from France, where we will discuss how they were able to drive profitable growth for their retailers with smart shopping campaigns. Then I will round up the day where you hopefully be fully equipped to be a true strategic partner and help drive profitable growth for your retailers. Now, Justin will kick off this session. In the previous session, Sarah Jane had shared that for CMOs, the two highest priorities are strategy and growth. In today's section, Katrina and I would like to go over how you can be a true strategic partner to help your clients drive this profitable growth. You likely recognize these four pillars from the last session, and I can attest to this using my own experience working with agencies and clients in the past. By bringing these into play, we can have those real strategic conversations with our retailers around the right investment levels, leveraging first party data, best practices to drive insights and drive that profitable growth. Currently, we see that smart shopping campaigns are used to optimize towards revenue growth. And although this is a good strategy, we can make this even better by integrating those things such as first party data that we discussed to not only optimize for growth, but growth in a profitable way. Now, why is it important to take profit into account? We have seen that during the pandemic, the costs have risen for retailers. Increased demand, though good, has led certain types of products to higher manufacturing and shipping costs. In certain verticals, these costs are at all time highs. Hence, it is key to really ensure that you help your retailers with growing in the most profitable way. As I said before, what we've historically seen is that clients have asked their agencies to focus on conversions, on volume, but this is just one piece of the puzzle. What does it really mean to be a partner to your clients? It means having deeper conversations, conversations around their first party data, and how they are looking to drive their own profit. By understanding their margins, we can really integrate that into Google Ads to bring the best value for our clients at the end of the day. Thank you, Justin. As you can see in this slide, we launched Target Rollers bidding for shopping in 2017. And a year later, we launched Smart Shopping Campaigns. We noticed that the retailers who were leveraging Smart Shopping Campaigns during the pandemic were getting better results compared to the retailers who were utilizing standard shopping during the pandemic. And this was due to the fact that smart shopping campaigns are better equipped to capture those fluctuations in demand. 
And that's why we took the strategic decision to put more of our engineering efforts into smart shopping campaigns. And we will build a lot of new features into this solution. One of the features that is unique for smart shopping campaigns is the new customer acquisition feature. This feature will allow you to drive new customer acquisition for your retailers. And this is particularly interesting given the fact that uh, nine out of 10 shoppers, when they start their uh, purchasing journey, don't know which brand they're gonna buy from. According to the research of McKinsey, as Sarah Jane mentioned in the first session. Hence, new customer acquisition feature within smart shopping campaigns will give you the opportunity to drive true business goals for your, uh, for your retailers and help them acquire new customers. The entire uh, product vision for smart shopping campaigns is to really step away from those channel specific goals and go to those uh, business specific goals. As digital marketeers, we all got used to optimize towards different channels, so having separate campaigns for display, YouTube, Gmail, etc. But as you are all aware of, customers are continuously switching between those channels. Hence, we are able to drive better business impact if we're able to capture those uh, customers across different channels. And this is exactly the reason why we build smart shopping campaigns, because it will um, really capture those customers across all the channels and take the full path to purchase into consideration, as well as does the best possible budget allocation across those channels. So now you know why Smart Shopping Campaigns is driving better business impact. Um, Justin will go into more detail how you can be a, a strategic partner by having conversations around setting the right investment level as well as target setting with the right campaign structure. I will hand it over to Justin now. Thank you, Katarina. So what does it mean once we have this first party data and we understand the margins of our clients' products? It allows us to strategically segment these campaigns via smart shopping. For example, we can have one campaign for high margin products where we have a lower target ROAS. In doing so, we're allowing to drive more volume and more profit for those product groups. On the inverse, for lower margin products, we put a higher target ROAS. This is ensuring that we're only entering auctions that we can enter in a profitable manner. Now keep in mind that we recommend having 100 conversions per campaign per month in order for the algorithm to perform at its best. For smaller retailers, this may be a bit restrictive. What we'd recommend here is to have one campaign for the high margin products and another campaign for everything else as a catch-all. Last year, we launched the Performance Planner for smart shopping campaigns. Performance Planner allows us to input ROAS and investment levels to determine the potential revenue at each of these levels. Now with that first party information and knowing the margins of your clients, you can take this to the next level by determining the profit for each of those ROAS and investment levels. Now with this in mind, how can we use this tool to have those strategic conversations with our clients around the right budget and ROAS targets? Let me walk you through the example that you can see here on the screen. So a ROAS of 13, though appealing, does not actually drive the highest profit for this specific client. Actually, a ROAS of seven would be the most profitable ROAS target for this scenario. Although if we can see here, a ROAS of four would actually drive more revenue, but less profit. So it's really about determining what the client's goals are. Are we focusing on growth? Are we focusing on building brand? Or are we focusing on driving profit? Are we focusing on driving volumes of revenue? Again, all these things need to be taken into consideration when setting these targets and budgets. Katarina will now go into detail on how you can set up this account structure for your clients while also considering seasonality. Thanks, Justin. So the first step is to add the first party data of the retailers that is important to their business to the shopping feed. This could, for example, be uh, their margin data or their stock level data in order to really start steering to what is important to them. For example, stock level data will allow you to focus more on those products with high stock levels, ensuring that your retailer is not left with excess stock and need to sell those products at a discount. You have the opportunity to use custom labels within the shopping feed. You can use up to five custom labels. This could be, for example, by uh, putting your products into different buckets. So for example, you have your high margin products, your medium margin products, as well as your low margin products. 
you can actually have strategic conversations with your clients to determine what falls into what buckets. So for example, you can work with feed rules to automatically put the products into the right buckets. So for example, um, if the margin levels are lower than uh, 15%, this all falls into the low margin buckets. Between 15 and, and 30% medium margin buckets and higher than 30%, for example, can be put into the high margin buckets. This is the same for stock levels. So you can utilize both custom labels for your margins as well as for stock levels. If you want to use more than one signal, you have the opportunity to combine custom labels. So for example, you want a campaign that targets all products who have both high stock levels as well as high margin levels. In this scenario, you can combine your stock level custom label with your margin level custom label in order to create a third custom label where you set the ROAS level. You can make sure that all the products who fall into the custom label bucket high stock plus fall into the custom label bucket high margin need to get the custom label low ROAS. Consequently, your campaign can target the custom label low ROAS for which you can set a low target ROAS bidding strategy. In this way, you have the opportunity to sell most of your retailers high margin and high stock level products, really ensuring that you grow your retailers in a profitable way. To conclude, this is an example of how a campaign structure could look like um, when you take the margin data of your retailer into consideration. So you would have uh, uh, four campaigns, three campaigns who is bucketing your high, medium and low margin products into separate campaigns, and one campaign for all your products which are at sale or potentially are uh, completely new to the retailer. So how does this work in practice? Your high margin product campaign will target the custom label uh, high margin. This will mean that automatically all the products that have the custom label high margin will fall into this campaign. For this campaign, you can then set a relatively low target ROAS in order to maximize the sales of your retailer's most profitable products. The same counts for your medium margin campaigns as well as your low margin campaigns. Then the sale campaign will target uh, all the products who are getting the custom label sale. On this campaign, you can set the maximized conversion value bidding strategy, because here you tell the system, maximize the revenue of the products that are in sale within the given budget given to the system. So the interesting thing about all of this, that it happens in a completely automatic manner. So if your retailer has price fluctuations, which consequently influence their margin, automatically the right custom label will be attached to the product, which means that automatically they fall into the right campaign with the right bidding strategy. And this is really what your retailers expect from you um, and is possible with uh, smart shopping campaigns. Today we spoke about how you can ensure profitable growth for your retailers, which is what CMOs expect from their agencies, by leveraging first-party data, such as margin data, stock level data, into smart shopping campaigns. We also spoke about how you can have strategic conversations around the right investment level and target setting for your retailers in order to hit their business goals. Thank you very much for attending this session and I hope you will tune into the next session, Grow My Store Partner 2. Hi everyone, thank you for joining the Academy Nair for Retail webinar. My name's Danny, and day to day I help UK businesses on their Google marketing strategies to help them grow. And more recently, I've become an EMEA lead for the Grow My Store for Partners tool, which I'm really excited to be talking you through today. So let's get started. So first of all, we'll talk about the Grow My Store, Store for Partners, the new tool that we've, we've just launched. We'll then go through how it works, how to make the most from your consumer experience reports, 
and then we'll go through a live demo of the tool itself as well. Before we begin, I think it's really important to be putting the last year into context. As we've seen, there's been an acceleration of online e-commerce, and as a result, consumers' expectations from this have increased and surpassed anything that we've seen in the years before. As you can see from the stats on the screen, in the UK, retail consumers are increasingly shopping between different retailers before deciding which retailer they purchase from. In Spain alone, Spanish shoppers are increasingly wanting for rewards programs to be activated automatically at the checkout process. And lastly, as you can see from Germany, German consumers are wanting more value than ever when shopping online. So, so to summarize, there's been um, huge expectations placed on online retailers, which is why the Grow My Store for Partners tool can really help you to leverage and understand where you can add um, value for these retailers to improve. Ensuring your retailer's website is seamless, engaging and tailored to your consumer's experience is now more important than ever, which is why we're introducing Grow My Store for Partners. For those of you who aren't familiar with Grow My Store, this is a free tool offered by Google, which helps you support your retailers with the very latest industry trends and consumer insights to help them boost their businesses. From running the tool, you'll get bespoke reports for all of your retailers to help them measure up against the very best in class consumer experience attributes. So as you can see from the categories on the screen, you're probably very familiar with all of these already, but two particular ones I wanted to call out were personalization and flexible fulfillment. So first of all, personalization is how well your retailers are allowing consumers to personalize their accounts. And secondly, on flexible fulfillment, this means around how flexible your retailers and um, payment and delivery options are for consumers, all of which are increasingly more important um, as consumers have been shopping more online over the last year. So why is this relevant to you as an agency? First of all, it's going to help you expand into new service areas. So things such as website optimization and broader platforms such as YouTube with your retailers. Secondly, it's going to help you um, onboard clients as easily as possible to other Google Ads solutions, making your job as an agency easier. Thirdly, it's going to make sure that you're standing out as a trusted advisor and business partner to your clients through the strategic advice that you can leverage and um, provided in the report. And then finally, it's going to make sure that both yourselves as an agency and your retail clients are standing out inside in uh, an increasingly competitive and environment moving forwards. So how does the tool work? It's as easy as five simple steps. So you'll first of all want to input up to 10 URLs for your retailers. You'll then create a profile. You'll then receive an overview of all of your retailers performance scores. And um, from that, you'll get an email and um, directly linking to each of your retailers reports. And from there, you can start to have the conversation with your retailers on how they can go about boosting their business by improving their online websites. I'm really excited to start off with the new feature that we've launched with Grow My Store for Partners, which is the overview of all of your retailers. So what this does is it provides you as an agency with a snapshot into all of your retailers' websites as to how well they're performing. So it really allows you to understand where you can best allocate your time to best and um, boost your retailers websites. Alongside this, it will give you access to industry benchmarking, individual consumer experience reports for um, your individual retailers and access to the latest Google tools, resources um, and think with Google articles to help you as an agency, as well as your retailers upskill. So now that we've looked at this, let's have a look into the actual tool itself and go through a live demo. So to, first of all, you'll come to the Grow My Store for Partners homepage and to get started, all you'll want to do is select this option here. From here, you'll be taken to a page where you can input a little more information about your retailers. So for example, as it's just the test, I'll put in a test URL for one of my retailers. I'll give a bit more information as to what their business type is. So whether they're online only, in-store only, or online and in-store. 
and I'll give a little bit more context as to what retail category they fall into. So for this case, it'll be beauty and personal care as an example. But obviously there's numerous different categories that you can select based on who your retailer is here. Once you've done that, you'll want to do the exact same for up to 10 retailers, um, all differing in terms of their business types and the retail categories they're specific to, as you can see here. And once you've input up to 10 URLs, you can run your report. So before running the report, you'll just need to create a quick profile. So for this, you'll input your name, your agency name, your Google Ads MCC ID, the country you're operating in. And then once you've done that, you'll be able to create a profile with Google to get the, um, the first of your reports. After you've done that, you'll need to sign in. You'll specifically see the overview of all of your retailers, which was what I alluded to earlier today. So this is where you can get a really visual snapshot as to how all of your retailers' websites are scoring and understand where you can best prioritize your efforts. So if we just take an example from the retailers that I've put into the tool for now, what we can see is that I've got three retailers who have a best in class website experience. So they've got scores of 80% or above in terms of how their consumer experience um, is going. If we scroll down to the next part, we've got two retailers who have advanced websites. So they're doing fairly well, but they've still got scope to improve. We've got four retailers who fall under foundational and we've got one retailer who is very basic in what their website offers and they have a lot of work to do. So from this, you can see that you as an agency can understand who you should be prioritizing out of your retailers and best allocate your time and resources to have the biggest impact. Once you've gone to this section, we'll go to the next part, which is getting individual reports for all of the different retailers that you put in URLs for. Now this can take any time between two and 24 hours to generate. So you'll be sent an email as soon as your retailers reports are ready to be reviewed. But in the meantime, you can access some additional Google resources to help you as an agency understand what the latest trends are and upskill um, as an agency, but also your clients by sharing these as well. Once you receive that email, you'll be able to go into your individual retailers reports, as I mentioned, and have a look through exactly on how they scored and what are the practical tips and how it can be improved. So as an example, um, for this specific retailer, they've got an advanced website score. And what this means is they're ticking a lot of boxes when it comes to delivering really good customer experience, but they do have a few little tweaks to make um, their website up to best in class. And if we scroll down, we'll be able to see all of the different categories that their website has been ranked on. And this is all of what I talked to you through earlier. So these are things such as product information, which we can see they're doing pretty well on. They've just got um, a couple of product ratings and reviews to upskill on. Personalization, flexible fulfillment, which is a really important one and one that they've been um, noted as needing to improve, as you can see by um, not having backs, basket, next day delivery or free re returns functionalities on the website. Customer service, security and mobile speed. So all of this allows you to have a really good understanding of exactly the key improvement areas needed for your retailer's website. And you can go in and find out a bit more detail by clicking into each of these individually. If we go back up to the top, we'll be able to delve a little deeper into some of the, the next steps from looking at this. So um, say for instance, um, we've got product prices, um, we can see that the product prices are very clearly listed on this retailer's website. So no need or no further work is um, needed on this. Um, if we keep on going down here, you'll be able to see a little more, more um, insight into some of the key consumer trends that we're seeing. 
um, and what this can, particular retailer can be doing to um, drive sales further um, in terms of um, shopping ads or um, further consumer insight that they can be looking into. Then as you as an agency kind of onboard new retailers, you can update your profile and your information to um, be having those new retailers um, in your Google profile. So all you'll need to do is come into the, the, the your profile section and update based on um, what retailers you're working with at this current moment. And that's it. So it's literally as simple as five steps and um, but from it you can get a really detailed overview of exactly how all of your retailers websites are performing at an overview level and then from there go into the individual report level for each of those retailers websites to have a really comprehensive um, strategic conversation with your retailer as to what they can be doing moving forwards and how you as an agency can be expanding into new areas and new services to help them boost their business going forwards as well. So now you've heard how the tool works, let's hear from one of our agencies, Better and Stronger, who have already used the tool with their clients to help them boost their business. So thank you, Simon, for joining us today. I'd love to first of all just kick it off and ask a bit more around your agency and how you've leveraged the tool um, with your clients so far. Thanks, Danny, uh, for having me. So Better and Stronger is a, an international web marketing agency. We're based in Lyon, France, uh, and we grew in Zurich and Göteborg in Sweden. Uh, we like to present ourselves as a, a growth partner for our clients, and that seems obvious to use Grow My Store. Uh, it gives us a clear idea on where our client can improve their UX, and we truly believe that with a, cu a better customer journey, they can have more uh, client in their store, physical store, but also online. So what do you think in this case were the particular factors that led to the success? I think the main thing that led us to, to be successful uh, in this case is simplicity. Uh, to be able to focus the clients on really specific items so they can feel comfortable to change uh, their website and their uh, customer journey. Um, if we want to go a little bit more technical, I think we focused on, on mobile UX uh, to be able to push more the customer review on the website and also give a better understanding where the store were located and how uh, the clients that were on the website can go to the store and see the product, touch the product and buy the product, obviously. How did using the Grow My Store for Partners tool improve your agency's relationship with this particular client? I think using Grow My Store uh, showed them that we could go beyond just being the Google ad expert. So uh, I think using this tool helped us to show the clients that we care. And I think it's the first step uh, to really help them to move toward their business objective and act uh, as a true strategic partner. So I think it definitely changed our relationship uh, because they know now that we are focusing on, on helping them to grow. Would you be recommending this tool to other agencies? Of course, yeah, I think it's, uh, first of all, it's free. <laughs> uh, then also it's super easy to use. Uh, I think it really helps to give clear recommendation uh, to, to the clients. So I think it's a fantastic tool. And, and when you start to improve also the customer's journey, as I said, you also improve the results of the campaign. So, so I think it's truly a win-win. There is absolutely no reason to, to dig in the tool and, 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 and use it and push it to the client, of course. Which feature of the tool did you find most helpful for you as an agency at Better and Stronger? And on that, what feature of the tool did you find most helpful for your client? Uh, as an agency, it's really interesting because you can also select those items and build your recommendation directly from the tools. And you've got also a lot of data um, that are um, different industry by industry. So it really helps also to show your clients where they are and, and how they should improve stuff that are probably uh, better done in the industry also by other uh, competitors. I think for a client, it was 
the fact that they can understand what was missing in their UX. So there were clear points that were uh, good, but some were really bad. So I think the fact that they can focus on three, four things to change were really a, a game changer for them. So, so I think that's the, the main reason it, it, it really helped them. Thank you so much for joining today, everyone. I hope you find today's um, section on Grow My Store for Partners useful and you're now feeling well equipped to go and utilize this with all of your retail clients. Please stay tuned for our next section, which will be specifically focused on apps for retail. Thank you and have a good rest of the day. My name is Olga and I'm the MIA Apps Product Lead at Google. The most important part of my job is to make sure that you and your customer can achieve your marketing goals with Google App Campaigns. Now, you might be wondering, what do I do you know, when I'm not working? And the answer is easy, I'm using mobile apps. <laughs> okay, that's enough of bad jokes, let's get this started. Now, just a little reminder, right now you are going to navigate through an introduction to read the lab solutions. After that, Katerina will be back to present a Farsa chat with two agencies before wrapping up this Academy on Air. Many of you might already have clients who have both a website and a transactional app. Some of you might not even have a client you know, who have an app. And this is a really good time for you to help them understand what is the value that an app can bring to their business. So for those who are new to app campaigns, let me give you a quick overview on why app campaigns are important in retail. And most importantly, where is the overall strategy that they can play on a holistic marketing strategy of a retailer? Now, something that we know very well at Google is that app users behave differently than web users and are oftentimes more valuable than web users even. Now we can see that retail app customers, one, they buy more frequently as an app is a great instrument for retention. Two, they, uh, they buy more items, exactly a 34% more. And three, last but not least important, they spend more than non-app customers. It is important for you and your customer to understand what is the value that an app brings to the business. And here's some common questions that you can ask to understand the full value of both web and app together. Does the app offer a different experience versus the mobile web? Where is the average size card on mobile web versus app? Where is the lifetime value of a customer in your app versus on mobile web versus even on offline stores? Now, these are the type of questions that you can help address your customer. An app oftentimes offer a richer experience than a standalone website. Now, on the left-hand side, you can see a sample feature from both web and app retailers. I call them the most have for any online retailer. On the right hand side, you have a whole new variety of features that are unique to your mobile app experience. They can range from anything starting with contactless payments, which are so important at this time, in the store navigation, or even push notification alerts, which can heavily impact the purchase behavior. Think about this now. How many times did you add an item to a shopping cart on a website? And then what? Life happened, something happened, and then eventually you were not able to complete the purchase. With this and richer experience on mobile apps, you can help the user to engage better and more frequently. Overall, we should definitely change the mindset and the way we think about our mobile apps, and most importantly, the metrics that we utilize to measure its success. We need to grow beyond mobile active users and daily active users. And we need to start incorporating metrics such as net promoted score, average order value, and many more. This will take a full mindset shift. Here are four ways to think about the metrics that your app can impact. Let's discuss the first one. Think about the bottom line and think about the profitability that your app is driving to your business. You really, really need to change the conversation and to start thinking how your app is driving profit. Now, think about how much you spend on customer support and call center support. Think about you know, how much you are saving 
by redirecting the users back to your app and solving for those tickets directly in the app. Look at metrics such as average order value or basket size. Go over this data and really evaluate if you are investing accordingly on app marketing efforts. Finally, look at metrics around customer sentiment and see how these metrics are impacted on a positive direction thanks to your app. One very popular metric to measure is net promoted score. See how this metric is impacted after a user installs your app. Great. Now that we have set the basis on why apps are important for retail businesses, let me give you a quick overview on what are app campaigns and how they can help you drive your marketing objectives. Sundar Pichai, our Google CEO, said once that machine learning is a core transformative way by which we are rethinking everything. Google app campaigns follow exactly the same pattern as it's a fully automated product based on machine learning. App campaigns are very easy to set up in just a very few steps. App campaigns are very simple to manage thanks to the power of machine learning. And last but not least important, app campaigns are remarkably effective at driving results at the scale, based of course on your marketing goals. So let's dig now into the actual process of getting started with app campaigns. Since app campaigns are a full automated product, it is key that you follow the best practices to guide the algorithm to find the right user each time with ease. I can't really state how important this actually is. Keep this in mind for the next few minutes, as this is going to be our guiding principle to succeed. The starting point is to really understand what are your marketing objectives. A sub promo can really help you drive key retail objectives. If your goal is to acquire new customers, you can do so by driving in-app actions, purchases, and growing basket size. You might be looking to grow sales and profitability, and you can use App Promo to convert web users into your app and continue driving subsequent purchases to grow lifetime value. Finally, your goal might be related to drive loyalty, build long-term relationships, or keep users coming back to your app. You can think about re-engagement to bring active users and lapsed users back into your app. Now you know what your goal is, we're going to cover a few best practices. The best practice number one is to really cover all the basics in a few simple steps. Number one, choose your optimization strategy. This can vary from installs, in-app actions, or even lifetime value and ROAS. Your bits and creatives are your new control levers. Make sure that you set up your bit appropriately and you make the most of all asset slots that you have available. This is 20 slots for image and video assets and four slots for text ad assets. Make sure as well that you text and experiment with different types of images and videos. Last but not least important, make sure that you cover all conversion events. These conversion events and their feedback loop it's what it's going to make this app campaigns become smarter and improve over time. And as I work in the product team, I can really tell you that Google app campaigns have come a long way to cover every single step of a user across the entire life cycle. So on each step of the life cycle, we have you covered. So now let's look at what video strategies we have available for these different goals. When it comes to setting the right goal and building a strategy, this is how to think and go about it. To maximize installs at an efficient cost per install, go for app campaigns for install and bid using CPI. To maximize installs likely to perform an in-app action, go for app campaigns for install advanced and bid using CPI. To maximize in-app actions at the target CPA, Use app campaigns for action and bid using CPA. Lastly, to maximize in app events at the target ROAS, use app campaigns for TROAS and bid also using TROAS. And here, I'd like to introduce you the case of Jumia, the leading e commerce platform in Africa. Jumia was looking for a solution to accelerate acquisition strategy across all of their markets 
while simultaneously lowering CPIs. The Google team worked with Jumia to make the implementation across all the different markets. In total, Jumia implemented business data feeds across 10 different markets on 15 different app campaigns. The results are compelling. Yumi managed to decrease overall cost per install up to 53% across eight different markets. Additionally, they also saw an overall increase on installed volume of 30% only after two weeks of implementing feeds. Yumi has now adopted feeds across all app campaigns for install and app campaigns for engagement. This leads me to best practice number two, which is as simple as making it easier for users to find what they are looking for. Link your product feeds, either Google Merchant Center or Business Data Feeds, to your Google App Campaigns. You can see what a smooth experience feels like across different networks on AdMob, Google.com, and YouTube. And here's best practice number three, which is nothing else than a continuation of this smooth customer experience by directing your user directly to your app from the ads. Our vision for Google Ads is to consistently surface in-app content across ad experiences by using the blinking, especially to those users who have the brand's app installed. We also want to help marketers along the way to improve their mobile conversion rates, and we do this by removing unnecessary steps along the way. Before we jump onto the actual structure, I want to show you some very important benefits of using the blinking. With the blinking, the mobile experience becomes seamless. You literally direct your customers from Google Ads to the exact point where they can take action within your app. With this, you close the loop of mobile conversions. You need to work and define what are important conversions for you on both your mobile website and your mobile app. Lastly, with deep linking, you improve mobile ROI. You optimize for performance by using conversion data from both your mobile website and your mobile app. Active linking is a great way to reduce friction from those mobile users who are coming back to your app. This is indeed the third best practice, and it is a more sophisticated way to engage with your users. Technology in the form of links has always helped us to direct the user to the best possible experience based on context. You can see here a standardized way for both mobile, web, and desktop. We are all very familiar with them. However, app linking standards aren't consistently across the industry. And this is why oftentimes you might be needed to do some development work on your site. Work with your engineers to understand what type of deep linking you can develop for your own app. Now, the benefit is clear. Advertisers will enable these so you have to two times increase in mobile conversion rates when an app user clicks on a mobile search, display ads, or shopping ads and land into the app versus the generic mobile web experience. And to close the loop with deep linking, I'd like to show you the case of Otto which is the largest German online retailer. By their own words, Otto used the Blinken as an enabler for realizing frictionless mobile shopping experiences across different online marketing touch points. And over time, they noticed that app drove the highest business growth across conversion rates, total conversions, and frequency of purchase. They saw an increase of 65% year-on-year sales growth in comparison with the mobile web. They also saw 2.3 times higher growth in mobile conversion rates in comparison with the mobile web. And overall, one third of the revenue was coming from the mobile app. Wow, there was a lot of ground covered, but we managed to reach the end of the introduction for retail app solutions. Let me quickly wrap up. Hopefully by now you'll be able to understand the value that an app brings to your business. You can define marketing objectives and match it to a business solution and you are familiar with the best practices of app campaigns for this fully automated product. We cover from the very starting point of your journey with Google App Campaigns to more sophisticated solutions such as speeds and deep linking. I hope this content was inspiring and can help you to kick the conversation with your clients on why app campaigns are important. Now, if you still have any more questions, we have added some more content for you to navigate in the resource section and you can also reach out to your Google point of contact. 
It's been an absolute pleasure being with you here today. And now I'll hand you back to Katharina. See ya. Hello everyone and welcome back to Academy on Air Fireside Chat. My name is Katharine de Vlieg and I'm EMEA's retail lead for agencies. I'm always very excited to talk to our agencies since they play a critical part in driving business impact for our advertisers. I'm here today with two amazing agencies, Resonio from France and Yellow Grape from the Netherlands. We're going to talk about how they were able to drive profitable growth for their retailers with the help of smart shopping campaigns. We will also discuss how they were able to overcome any of the challenges that they had with smart shopping campaigns. But uh, first of all, I would love everyone to introduce themselves. Desiree, could you please introduce yourself as well as your agency? Thank you, uh, Katharina. Uh, I work as an account lead at Yellow Grape. Yellow Grape is an e-commerce agency located on the canals of Amsterdam. Uh, we focus mostly on businesses that have grown rapidly and almost reached their ceiling. And as an account lead, uh, I'm responsible for the strategy and business goals of our clients, but I'm also specialized in the acquisition channels like Google Ads. As a fellow Dutchie, uh, the office near to the canals of Amsterdam sounds like an absolutely amazing location. Um, Sebastian, do you also like to introduce yourself as well as your agency? Hi everyone, I'm Katarina. Uh, happy to be with you today. I'm Sebastian from Rizoneo. Rizoneo is a French agency founded 17 years ago with three friends. Uh, today we are AD consultants and we are specialized in traffic acquisition, so ACS, social media advertising and display, SEO, analytics, and we are also a CSS. Very excited to have you here today, Sebastian. I'm also here today with my colleague Hubert, who is a strategic partner to many agencies within France. Hubert, do you also want to introduce yourself? Yes, yeah, sure. Hello, Katarina. Hello, everyone. I'm Hubert. I've been working at Google for one year and a half as an agency development manager. And my role is to develop a strong partnership with agencies on the French market. Thanks for being here, Hubert. Um, let's kick off with the interview. Uh, Desiree, what was the reason that you decided to start with smart shopping campaigns? Thank you, Katharina. That's actually a great question because at first, as an agency, we were a bit skeptical about smart shopping. Um, however, Google mentioned to us that we could have an increase of 30% uh, with the conversion value. So that was, of course, something we needed to think of. Uh, and with some of our clients, uh, we sort of reached the, the, the volume ceiling. So we, uh, so we saw that we could not have any more volume with the standard shopping campaigns that we already had. So this could be a great solution for us to break through that. And that's why we wanted to test it. And actually Google uh, offered to us that we could have an AB smart shopping split test. So that was something uh, yeah, we, we also wanted to do to prove to our clients that it could really work. Thanks so much for sharing. And what about you, Sebastian? As Desiree, we started testing smart shopping because Google pitch was good. Uh, Google was reporting a 30% increase in convention value with smart shopping, which seems a lot, but also very promising. Um, as Desiree, we were also very skeptical at the beginning because we were already using all Google best practices for shopping, such as ROAS bidding, display remarketing. And then the question was, how is it possible to find an additional 30%? Where is that coming from? How is that possible? Thank you, Sebastian, for this comment. Actually, we heard this comment a lot from our agencies. Indeed, we've seen that advertisers drive a 30% increase in conversion value when using smart shopping campaign. Obviously, it's an average that we observe on many accounts. And I'm very curious to know what is the uplift that you observed on your accounts on your side Resoneo and Yellow Grip. But before that, you both said that you were skeptical about the launch of smart shopping campaign. Could you explain why this is? Yeah, so as an agency, we were really a bit skeptical about smart shopping. And that was mainly because uh, smart shopping felt a bit like a black box for us because you can't say, see any search terms or insights anymore. 
Um, and in this way, we didn't know which keywords were triggering uh, certain products. And we had to completely trust Google to do this correctly and not waste our budget on irre irrelevant keywords. And uh, also for our clients, it was a really big thing because uh, it felt for them that they were losing control because normally uh, they would say to us like this, are, these are our top products and pushed it on the most generic terms. But with smart shopping, we couldn't do it anymore. And we had to trust on the algorithm and Google matching it in the right way. So that was really why we were a bit skeptical about it. I would also use the word of black box. And I think everybody has used black box word for to describe smart shopping uh, at the beginning. Uh, if you remember at the beginning, there were no reporting at all. It was impossible to do nothing for smart shopping. And to be honest, we don't like it when we don't understand how things work. We need to understand and to explain to our customers. Uh, now things have changed, we have some more reporting on placement, we have the ability to use negative keywords, but smart shopping remains a tool, which means a real loss of control for our customers and for our consultants. And it's not always easy to accept the loss of control. And that's the main reason why we started smart shopping mainly on small campaigns. Thanks so much for sharing this, uh, Sebastian and uh, Desiree. Um, you both still decided to, to test uh, smart shopping campaigns. Could you explain a little bit more how you uh, set up the test exactly? Uh, Desiree? Yes, definitely, Katrina, because the test was something uh, yeah, we, we really liked as an agency to do for, for one of our clients. And normally with standard shopping campaigns, uh, we would divide the campaigns into uh, funnel, funnel based uh, campaigns. So one campaign would be focused on upper funnel traffic and one campaign on lower funnel traffic. Um, but for this particular client, we want to test a different uh, setup uh, with smart shopping. And uh, we uh, decided to uh, divide the campaigns into margin groups. So we created three margin groups and then we will test the smart shopping campaigns with the margin groups to the old standard campaigns with, with the more funnel based campaigns. And uh, yeah, this turned out really well because in four weeks testing period, we created an uplift with smart shopping of almost 400% for this particular client. So uh, yeah, we were really happy about it and the client too. And then, yeah, we proved to them that smart shopping was really working. Wow, Desiree, that are absolutely amazing results. I'm very happy to hear that you were able to drive that great success for your retailer with the use of uh, steering smart shopping campaigns towards margin data. Um, it is indeed true that it's very important what kind of data you put into the algorithm of smart shopping campaigns. So the algorithm of smart shopping campaigns leverages the best of Google signals, but you as an agency play an absolutely key role here uh, to, all, to enrich the algorithm with the first party data of the client in order to get the best possible results. So I'm very happy that you were able to, to drive those amazing uh, business impact. And uh, Sebastian, what about you? How did you set the test up and what, what were the results? Uh, at the beginning, most of the tests we've done were on small campaigns. Uh, results were good, but it was still difficult to convince clients to uh, move to smart shopping and more strategic campaigns. Uh, to do so, we, have, we had to use a lot of A-B testing to convince them. And as our clients want to be sure of the A-B testing process, the best process we've found is to run a geographic A-B testing. So we've divided France in two, three, four parts with equivalent performance during the past months. And then we were running the traditional campaign uh, on a part of the France and a smart shopping on, on, on some regions. Uh, results were very good with that process and it was a, a good way to convince clients. And now we've completed our move to smart shopping and convince both clients and consultants. Sebastian, you said at the beginning it was quite easy to convince a client to test smart shopping on a small campaign, but it was much more difficult to convince them to uh, test smart shopping on a bigger campaign. This is a challenge that we see with a lot of clients. Did you receive other concerns from your clients regarding the smart shopping campaign expansion? Yeah, good question, Hubert. Uh, to be honest, we have had two clients with trend results. We, we, we used to have very low percentage of new clients, new customers. 
we had about 50 to 70 percent of sales on existing customers which is very low uh, and which is the opposite of what our clients want for for their campaigns uh, and we have found the solution using the uh, new customer acquisition beta which is now a fully launched functionality uh, and to, to change the results of the campaign we have had to uh, um, give high value to the new customer uh, otherwise, the, the result we are not changing enough. Uh, but using this uh, new customer functionality with high value to the new customer, you can uh, impact the, the new customer rate a lot. Thanks so much for sharing, Sebastian. It's great to hear that you were able to drive great business impact via the new customer acquisition feature. This is now fully launched for uh, smart shopping campaigns and a unique feature that you can leverage with uh, smart shopping campaigns. Um, let's go to the final question. Uh, Desiree, could you please share what your plans are moving forward? Yes, uh, of course, Katharina. Uh, yeah, in the last month, we already moved almost all of our clients to smart shopping. Uh, so, of course, we want to keep optimizing those campaigns to get the best results for our clients. But like Sebastian mentioned, uh, he was already testing the new customer acquisition tool. And that is something we would really like to do for some of our clients. And also maybe test other features within smart shopping, like shoppable display ads or other things. So, yeah, we have a lot of a lot to do in the coming months. And what about you, Sebastian? Mm, as results are still good, I'd say the next point is to focus on margins. Uh, we plan to do so by reorganizing campaigns and using custom labels. And hopefully some one day we'll have a new bidding functionality to focus on margin instead of turnover. Uh, Katarina, I don't know if you have some news about the roadmap for that, but it would be great. That is indeed our product vision for smart shopping campaign, Sebastian. So hopefully next time we talk, I can share a little bit more about it. For now, you can uh, steer towards margin data by leveraging custom labels within the product feed. Um, but I'm super excited to hear that you, your plans moving forward is to focus more on steering towards margin data, where Desiree already had lots of success with. And it's interesting to hear that Desiree, on the other hand, has plans to focus more on um, the things that you already had lots of success with, the new customer acquisition feature. So it seems like the two of you should definitely connect with each other and um, share some best practices here. Thank you so much for, for being here to, today, uh, Desiree, Sebastian and, and Hubert. I absolutely loved um, interviewing you and I hope uh, everyone in the audience that it inspired you to uh, start testing smart shopping campaigns uh, leveraging first party data and as well as the new customer acquisition feature. Thank you so much, Katarina. I really like doing the interview together with you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. It was a pleasure to be with you today. Bye. Thank you so much, Katarina, Desiree and Sebastian for your time. Uh, it was a very pleasure to have you today and I hope to see you soon for many more success. Welcome back to the last session of the Academy on Air. In this session, I will summarize everything that we learned today. In the first session, we saw that in 2020, we experienced 10 years of e-commerce growth in just three months. This digital acceleration means that the customer journeys are more complex and messier than ever before. This also means that there's a unique opportunity for you to drive new customer acquisition for your clients. Especially given the fact that nine out of 10 shoppers who start their customer journey online don't know which brand to buy from. We also saw that CMOs expect their agencies to help them drive profitable growth and be a true strategic partner. In the second session, we discussed how you can meet these expectations from the CMOs and drive profitable growth for them with the use of smart shopping campaigns steering towards first-party data, such as margin data or stock level data. We also discussed how you can be a true strategic partner to them by giving them advice 
on what investment levels to set, as well as what target setting to set. The third session was about the Grow My Store for Partners tool. Given the acceleration in e-commerce last year, ensuring that your retailer's e-commerce website is um, seamless, engaging, and tailored to their customers is more important than ever before. The Grow My Store Partner tool will help you to give strategic advice to your retailers on the latest industry trends. Hence, this will help you to be that true strategic partner that the CMO wants. So make sure to check it out. You can find the link in the resources page on the website. The fourth session was around our retail app solutions. We discussed what value an app can bring to your retailer's business and how it fits into their overall business strategy. We then discussed that the first step is to set a marketing objective and set a bidding strategy according to this objective. A marketing objective, for example, could be uh, consumers downloading the app of the retailer or consumers doing a specific in-app action, or for example, re-engaging re with your current app users. We then discussed how you can set up your very first app campaign, and we discussed three best practices, all the way from a more um, easy uh, implementation to a more uh, advanced implementation. In summary, uh, in this session, uh, we learned what the value is that an app brings to your retailer's business, how it fits into their overall business strategy, and how you can set up a, a great campaign focusing on a specific marketing objective. Next, we talked with two amazing agencies, uh, Risonio from France and Yellow Grape from the Netherlands. They shared how they were able to drive profitable growth for their retailers uh, via the use of smart shopping campaigns, steering towards first-party data and leveraging the new customer feature. Thank you so much for attending the Academy on Air. I hope you learned a lot. Um, if you want to find more interesting resources, please find it at the top of the page at the resources area of the website. And you can find uh, a survey on the left or right hand side of me. Um, it would be great if you can please fill this in and give us your feedback. Thanks so much and wish you a great rest of the day.